Dolls, Me Ex Condensus, and today we're finally going to be unboxing these three new Monster High dolls. So we're going to be unboxing Claudine, Torlai, and Frankie, and these are the new like signature dolls, so the main line of dolls. I am so excited about these. So I've had these two since a few weeks ago when I was in Texas, and I just never got around to making the video about them. And then Torlai was the last one I was able to find. I actually found her in the middle of nowhere in Alabama. I got very lucky and I will link the doll hunt in which I found her in the description in case you guys are interested. So let's take a look at the boxes. The first doll that we are going to be looking at is Claudine and I really like this new style of packaging. It shows the dolls really nicely. It shows all their accessories and it's super eye-catching on the shelves actually. I got to see a fully stocked store with these earlier and it looked so so cool. And mine is the version that has the crescent moon shirt. There is another version with the stripey shirt. And then if we go down, we can see on the left, it has a picture of, on, every box has different characters. So Claudine's has Laguna, Claudine, and Cleo. It says Claudine Wolf and her little symbol. And then we have her pet, who used to be a cat, but perhaps this is a wolf now. I can't tell. Um, and she maintains the same name. That is Crescent. And then if we, oh, the sides have really cute like detailing that is special for each character. So you can see the wolf howling at the moon this is a little furry hand little moon necklace eye coffin you know the sneakers that she's wearing too i really like that they've been drawing some of their accessories i think that's so much fun and then the other side monster high and then on the back you can see the art of claudine character art back here of the other characters and then it says Claudine Wolf. It says her monster type is a clawsome werewolf slash human so the new plot line is that she is um her dad is a human and her mom is a werewolf so that's um part of the central plot line of the new series. It says her monster must have so this is really interesting it says Furluminator brush. Furminator is like a popular brand of pet brush I don't know um and Blue Moon Spookies and then her monster pet is Crescent and I love that these things actually end up coming with the doll so you can see the brush and I'm pretty sure that's the cookie so pretty cool and then now the next doll we're going to be looking at is Frankie Stein, and they look so, so good. I'm really excited about this signature doll from them. I think they turned out amazing. And you can see all of their extra accessories over here. If we move down, you can see they have Draculaura, Laguna, Frankie, and then, of course, Watsy in their little box art thing. And I like that Watsy has, like, a little lightning bolt-shaped um, whoosh when they run. It's really cool. And then it says Frankie Stein in their new logo um, their little symbol, and then Watsy. So it used to be What's It, now it's Watsy. I believe um, What's It could be considered an offensive term, so they switched it, which I don't mind that at all. And then if we look out over here, we can see some of Frankie's symbols. Love the little safety pin, the shoes, the backpack, super cool. And then on the back, you can see the character art for Frankie, as well as some of the other characters sitting in the background. And then it says Frankie Stein. Monster type is Voltageous Franken Monster. Monster must haves is Icoffin and Screechsa. And the monster pet is Watsy. And then last but absolutely not least is Torali. You guys know, if you've been watching me for any amount of time and seen a Monster High video of mine, Torali is so, so special to me. Torali was the reason that I started collecting dolls at all because I really, really wanted a Torali doll and I didn't actually find her for a couple of years after, but it was still very, very special to me. So um, I was really excited to find her. And funny enough, she ended up being the last one that I found, which is very fitting. Um, and this is what she looks like in her packaging. And it seems like she is now a singer, which is an interesting change. And there's her pet Sweet Fangs. I actually don't have the original Sweet Fangs. I bought my Torlai secondhand and she didn't come with her Sweet Fangs. So I'm glad to have one now. And you can see him in the art. And then Torlai looks amazing here. And we've got Cleo and Claudine. I like the little tail here too. And then if we, oh, symbolism. I love these little symbols. It's so cute. And then on the back of the box, I love Torlai's character art. And by the way, Torlai is actually a Walmart exclusive in the US, so if you haven't been able to find her, that's probably why. Um, it says that her monster type is a ferocious werecat. Her monster must-haves are her scratch mark choker and perfectly chilled milk box, and her monster pet is Sweet Fang. All right, let's get them out of the box. I'm so excited. All three of my new dolls are now out of the packaging, and they just look so, so good. I honestly wasn't 100% sure about Claudine's face, but wow. In person, she looks so good. And her hair is polypropylene, as has been reported by others, but it is very well treated. Like, it feels nice. I do think over time that her hair will 
um, age a lot worse than the others because it is polypropylene. So hopefully um, some, at least some Claudine dolls, I hope that they have saran hair. Um, I do like that this is nicely styled. It's got this really nice bouncy curl. The curls aren't bad at all. I think they look pretty good. And then she has this little top knot thing. It's very interesting. And I guess um, I unintentionally started reviewing Claudine. So we're going to start with her. And she looks so, so good. I can't get over the face. Look how big and expressive and pretty the eyes are. And I love the little crescent moon shape in the pupils. It's such a subtle little thing. And I also like that Claudine and Torelai, because they are half animal. So, I mean, humans are animals too, but you know what I mean. Like, um, Claudine is half wolf and then Torelai is a werecat. Um, they have these, like, different shaped pupils. I don't know. I just think that's a really clever detail. And I love, love, love her freckles and her little wolf nose. I love the painted on edges too. I'm really excited that they're doing that for Claudine now. She also has these little fluff pieces at the side of her head. And those, not only do they just look cute, but they're actually meant to help little sunglasses stay on. Or, of course, her glasses because Claudine wears glasses now. Her glasses are gold. I really like them. They have some subtle details on them as well. And let's put them on. So you set them on top of the little fluffs on the side of her head. And, hmm, not sitting very well for whatever reason. Come on, please wear your glasses, honey. I want to display you with your glasses on. I will figure that out later. <laughs> um, and she has a really nice lip color with little painted on fangs. So, so cute. And then, again, her hair is polypropylene, unfortunately. But it is very, very well rooted into the head, which it better be. This is a cheaper hair fiber, so they better give us a lot of it. I like the colors that they chose. It is alleged that they picked polypropylene for Claudine specifically because they liked the color. And this color was not available in Saran. I can't really confirm that, but that's the theory that's going around. That's, yeah, I don't know. Um, she has a little top knot as well. And that's all for the styling of the hair. And then my favorite thing about Claudine and Torelai both in Generation 3 is definitely that they have these really nice detailed ears. So you can see that she has little fluff sculpted into the ear. I think it looks so, so good. So cute. And then she has this little earring, which it functions as an ear cuff too, which is interesting. Um, looks super good. It's two crescent moons and then what I would guess is meant to be a full moon or maybe it's just meant to be the post of the earring. I'm not sure. And then on the other ear, there's just this little spiked collar looking thing. Cool. I know this isn't perfect, but the only way I'm able to get the glasses to be on is by kind of putting it over the hair a little bit. Um, they look really good. I'm just gonna have to rubber band them on, I guess. I just wish that they had come rubber banded onto her face at that point then. Um, but as you can see, they're kind of required to sit higher than the little fluffs, so you actually just have to use her hair. It's weird, though, because maybe it's just this particular pair of glasses is wonky, because the, um, Ghoul Spirit one, the glasses stay on perfectly fine, so I don't know. But anyways, they look so good. I really, really love the glasses. All right, now we're gonna take a look at her outfit. So she has a pair of overalls on, which are super cute, and then this little long sleeve shirt underneath, and then a few plastic details. So the plastic details are similar to the glasses. They're just casted in a kind of a lightly shimmery gold-colored resin, and there's some painted details like right here, but other than that, um, I don't think there's anything else. So she has a little moon with turquoise in the middle is my guess on what that's supposed to be and then we've got some crescent moons here little star here and this choker is actually a completely separate piece from the little necklace which i like so you can either have them stacked or not stacked or whatever you want to do and it makes them look more like more realistic if they're not molded together and then she has this little belt which is made out of a soft vinyl material so it's very like squishy. You got that a lot with Generation 1 dolls. And then it attaches with that little peg back there. And then her overalls have stitched on detailing, which I really appreciate. Of course, I love when there's real working pockets, but I don't mind if there's not as long as the detail is there. So the stitch on details are much appreciated. Um, and they are purple. They have leopard print all over or cheetah print. Um, and then this really cool little moon wolf diagram thing up here. It's hard to see though. I don't know. 
Um, and then here we have her little long sleeve shirt, which I am going to be taking on the overall, taking off the overall so that you guys can actually see the shirt better. There are two versions of the shirt. There's one that is like stripes. And then there's this one that has the little paw prints and the moons all over it. I don't know which one I prefer. Um, it's just kind of a fun variation in the dolls. So it's something to look out for if that's something that you care about. And then if we move down, we can take a look at her shoes. So she has these black... So all of the socks are leg warmers, which makes the shoes easier to put on, so I don't mind it. But also it's fun because you can use them as leg warmers or you can use them as socks. So they're black. Not the softest material in the world, but they work for what they are. Her shoes are purple sneakers with gold painted details. So you can see some moons here. These shoelaces are gold on both shoes and then the heels are really cool so these are or not the heels but like the soles of the shoes so they're wedges but then there's this like really cool fang thing oh look at the soles of the shoes okay i love that that is so much fun i really love this it looks super cool very these are very like monster high -ish shoes i feel like i feel like a lot of the signature doll signature dolls unfortunately fall short in terms of like having generation one ish monster high shoes but these are great next we're gonna look at claudine's accessories so she comes with her pet crescent i love that they're bringing the pets back um i'm really excited to see more of them and even some of the other sets come with the pets like the coffee break set comes with another of perseus so pretty cool and we've got some painted detailing these are done with that printing method that makes barbies look pixelated so they have pixelated screenings but honestly i don't care if it's on the pets as long as it's not on the dolls and then we have claudine's bag which is actually a really nice bag it's really big and interesting we've got a little charm on it too which might it's just rubber banded on let me put it where it actually goes it hooks in right here which is a really fun detail and it's got a key on it a little crescent moon and then i'm not actually sure what that's supposed to be pretty cool and then th there's a moon here th there's texture here as well as paint and then these little scratch marks and then it's made out of a really soft vinyl material and opens up you can get in there it's a bit difficult there we go opens up so you should be able to put a lot of her accessories in there which is very fun and then she comes with howl puffs Oop, dropped it i love that they even did like the nutrition facts on the back and stuff like these are very realistic fun accessories like realistic but monster highified accessories which i love and then claudine's eye coffin and you can see a little like wolf at the top and a bunch of moons and leopard print and scratch marks very claudine <laughs> and then her what was it called fur eliminator her fur eliminator brush i appreciate that these don't come with actual brush brushes because like doll brushes are not good for dolls but this is like a fun accessory version that you can actually play with for the dolls i totally just dropped that through the hole there there we go <laughs> and then this what was this marked as? Let me look. I gotta get the name right. Blue Moon Spookies. So it's just a Oreo, really. Um, cute. And then we have this fur thing. So it's not a coat. I think it's just like a fur vest. Yeah. And looks good. I love that it's lined. That is above and beyond. And then there's a little cardboard hanger in here. I wish that they had come with real hangers, but it's okay. Um, and it's not my favorite grade of faux fur, but it's not bad by any means. It's just not the super soft plush kind. All right, so now I'm going to put the coat on her so that you can look at it, and then we're going to take the overalls off so we can look at the shirt. This is what Claudine looks like in the fur vest. Not my favorite with this outfit, but I will probably be able to find an outfit that I like it with. And then I wanted to demonstrate that all of the accessories, well, most of them, the ones that are meant to be held in her hands, actually have these little rings on them, which you can cut off if you don't like them, but they're amazing because you can use them to actually have the doll hold the accessory without having to use like poster putty or rubber bands or something. I love it. It's so, so nice. And then um, I also have her holding her little bag so cute all right now we're going to take a look at the undershirt this is what the shirt looks like i love this piece and it's going to be so versatile and fun to mix and match with this is so so nice so you can see the print on it i love the wide neckline it has and it's a crop top so um it's just below her belly button so if she were to wear like normal rise jeans she would have a bit of belly showing these are super super cute i'm a big fan of these um or i should say this i'm a really big fan of this shirt so so cute and i've got the glasses on pretty good it's just um weird that they are a bit too big for her face i don't know 
Anyway, we're going to move her aside because now we're going to move on to Frankie. I'm going to save Torlai for last because it's Torlai. I know. I know. I'm going to like freak out over her. I love Torlai so much. Um, the next doll we're going to be looking at is Frankie, and I love the Generation 3 interpretation of Frankie. I feel like they look so, so good, and their face is actually the most similar, in my opinion, to Generation 1, um, but I really, really like the new style, and we're going to start by looking closely at the face because I just love the style they used, but also, like, look at the little lightning bolts and the eye shine. I love the eyebrows. I like this little piercing here. It fits Frankie really well to have that. I love that they have a little pout so so cute and then lightning bolt earrings and i like the little studs there such a subtle little detail but i love it and the earrings match their eyeshadow really nicely i like the yellow eyeshadow with the pink and the purple well this is kind of a purple color i guess and then some gray up above really really cool and they've got a stitched neck little stitch on the cheek really nice blushing too i, I didn't expect to have so much blushing i feel like gen one rarely if ever had blushing um and then the their hairline is a square hairline as always for frankie and their hair is pulled back into two little pigtails um mine has produced a slight bald spot um just because they pulled a little bit more into the pigtail than they probably should have but um i can just restyle that and pop some more hair down and it'll be fine and they have a pink and a blue lightning bolt barrette and then super, super soft hair, exactly like Generation 1 Frankie. So funny enough, like Gen 1 Frankie never had white hair like you would have expected. It was always slightly blonde looking, and this is the exact same fiber that they used before. And then it looks like there's just small black highlights throughout, but it's actually just this big chunk of black that's just kind of distributed throughout the hair. And then there is the one blue streak right in the front, and then a little bit on the side too. I really, really like the blue streaks so so cute i'm really glad that that seems to be a new staple for frankie i think it looks super super good and then now we can take a look at the outfit so we're gonna move down frankie is wearing a vest a little undershirt and a pleated skirt and then they have this little rubbery belt thing i love that it's it's frankie on it i also like that like on the prosthetic leg frankie also writes their name on it so so cute and then there's a little combination lock. I think that's what that is. I guess it could be a clock. Um, and then a little safety pin and a lightning bolt here. And it's just a three-tiered chain belt that comes together on one side to have like an asymmetrical look to it. I love the vest, but it does have mostly just printed on detailing. It's a pretty flat piece, but I'm not too mad at it. But this is probably the lowest quality clothing piece, main clothing piece of any of them. Um, but the... The fabric like it feels nice it's just that i wish that these were either stitched or done with like ribbon or something and all the details do continue on to the back which i can't appreciate and then we'll look at the undershirt in just a bit but this is what it looks like under the overshirt or the vest and then the pleated skirt is amazing so it is all just printed on but i mean it's a plaid pleated skirt that's kind of what you would expect and i love that for the some of the lines through the checks, you actually get little lightning bolt shaped ones. That is such a subtle, really, really cute detail. So it just makes a simple piece like a pleated skirt more Frankie. So you have the Technicolor, which is very Frankie, but also the little lightning bolts. It's so, so cute. And it's pretty high-waisted. As you can see, it goes up pretty high. And yeah, just kind of a regular pleated skirt. And then before we look at the vest, we're going to move down. So Frankie in Generation 3 actually has a prosthetic leg, which is a really, really cool touch um not only do i feel that it matches frankie as like a monster it would just make sense like if you couldn't get a hold of another leg or something but also it is a wonderful way to represent people with prosthetic legs so i think or just prostheses in general i think that this was a super super interesting and thoughtful way to add more representation to monster high although it seems that a lot of people feel that the representation in generation three is contrived i don't really see how this just seems like a really thoughtful way to add representation for people who it is important to but also just kind of it's just here you know it's not like they pointed out or anything it's just like frankie has a prosthetic leg now it's not a big deal i don't know and i love the way that they did it i think it's so cool it has so many frankieisms so first of all they seem to have doodled all over it which is so much fun um and this these are the same doodles that are on the other frankie doll so i wonder if they're going to switch them up at all um and there's like gears all over it this little bolt these stitches sculpted in the back has i think those are meant to be little antennas that would have the little lightning bolts going between them, which is super interesting. And then I'll take off the shoe really quick. The foot is also like metal and 
I don't know. I, I think it's so, so cool. But it is the same size foot, so they can wear any other um, Monster High shoes. It's really neat. And they have two sets of stitches on their legs. They have one on the calf over here and then one up here. And I have heard that the stitches on these first rounds of dolls are actually pretty delicate. So they actually do like scratch off or sometimes they just peel right off. So that is something to really be careful of. The shoes are basically like high top Converse, I guess. I don't really know, but they have this big old platform. I wish the lightning bolts on the platforms themselves were painted, but I think it's meant to look like um, you know, like on a shoe like Converse, they'll have the just all white here. So I think that's what they were going for. It looks good. I think it looks really good. And I love the little stitched on green lightning bolts there and the little blue trim. Really nice shoes. Before we move on, let's take a look at Frankie's extra accessories. So the first one is this monsterified Polaroid camera. This is really interesting. So it's hexagon shaped. You can see all the little buttons. It's got, I guess this is where the flash would come out. The lens is an eyeball, which I love. It's got little teeth on it. It's got um, like a grid pattern, kind of like vaporwave looking. I really like this. I love that it has so many painted details. And then to go with this, they come with these cute, cute, cute little Polaroid photos. So you can see that it says Scaris and Boo York doll hair is getting everywhere. Um, we have a picture of Claudine, Dracula, and Frankie that says Scaris, and then Claudine and Cleo that says Boo York. So cute! And then, oh, also really cool. This has a little slot at the top, so it kind of doubles as an extra purse, but it's actually for the little pictures, so you can kind of have them like come out and develop. So cool. I love this detail. And you can fit both of them in there. Pretty cool. And then it would be really cute if more dolls came with the little Polaroids so you can like add them in. And then this is the Screechsa that is mentioned on the packaging. It has, um, I love the spider web cheese. That's so cool. And it has little pepperonis and little spiders or ticks or something. Ugh. And it's done with that um, like pixelated printing look to it. And then we have... Frankie's eye coffin, which has a little safety pin, little stitches, a lightning bolt, a little heart, stitched heart with a lightning bolt there. Backpack with another little hangy charm thing. So you could probably trade these between characters because actually Toralize has one too, by the way. Um, this one is a really bright pink. It has a light bulb. It's a really bright pink color. It has a light bulb. It has a rubber band holding it on, which I'm going to be leaving on. It has a little F and a lightning bolt and then the bag is two lightning bolts it's see-through i love the painted on detail i think that looks really good and then yeah it actually does open up too pretty cool and frankie doesn't come with as many accessories to put in there because the polaroid camera was kind of the main one and then frankie does have sunglasses you could convince me that these are recasts from gen one i don't think that they are but i think um gloom beach comes with very similar ones they also come with this really cute varsity jacket, which is really nice. It has the sleeves are separate pieces and the collar and the um, trims are separate. Pretty cool. But all the details seem to be printed on except this one. This feels like potentially it is like painted on or something, which is quite nice. And then this too. It, it It's just a subtle difference in texture, but I might be crazy. And it's made out of a really nice jersey style fabric. So pretty cool. And then... Watsy, so basically the same as Watsy, just um, in this new chibi style and a new color. So Watsy has a little pink bandana, a little green tuft of hair. For some reason, or I guess that's meant to be a spot. I was thinking it was like eyeshadow, but then I was like, wait, probably not. Um, possibly a gear for an eye. I don't know, but the eye shines are like square, implying that maybe they're like robotic. Robotic, I don't know. And then these little lightning bolt wings, which are super cool. So just a reinterpretation of what's it. All right. So now we're going to be changing the outfit around a little bit. I didn't point this out earlier. And then I was like, oh yeah, sorry. This is the second Frankie doll that I've reviewed. But anyway, I wanted to point out that they have the cutest sticking out big ears. I love, love their ears. I love the new style of ears in the next generation. Not only for the dolls that have like animal ears, but also like even just human ears or like elf ears. They look so much better. Draculors are probably my all-time favorites. Dracula and Torlai just turned out amazing in terms of the little ears. I don't know. It's just something I really appreciate. This is what the varsity jacket looks like. Not my favorite because it's not... I don't know. With this outfit, it's not my favorite, but I think it would look good with the sports outfit, so I might 
put it with that, but I don't know. But anyway, that's what it looks like. It's pretty cute. I like it as an accessory. I do prefer how Laguna came with like a swimsuit. I feel like that was more exciting than just having like an extra piece like a jacket, but it is still really, really fun. And then, oh, the sunglasses are great. Okay, those are actually super cool. And they hold on super well, which I appreciate. And then the backpack goes on like this. I only really like to do one shoulder for these, but you can do both if you want to. Looks good. And then um, the Polaroid, I would think, I just made the Polaroids fly everywhere. I would think this would go around the neck, but it doesn't seem to. It seems like they just hold it like a purse. Um, I like that Frankie's the designated photo taking friend here. So cute. They're like, guys, Polaroid film isn't cheap. Are y'all going to contribute? <laughs> anyway, um, now let's take a look at the undershirt. Y'all, oh my god. I wasn't sure about this doll's outfit. Like, I, I thought it was fine, but I wasn't the biggest fan. But like this, I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. This is so cute. I do really like the vest, and I understand the like why it's here for Frankie. But like, I don't know. These specific lines being printed on is just so ick to me. Not my favorite, but like, this is glorious. Oh my god. It looks so, so good. And this is all just printed on detailing too, but the fact that there's like a collar and the different dimensional effect, this little gathered sleeve and the stitching, like it just looks so good. Whereas this, um, it is hemmed, but you can't tell. I don't know. This is amazing. This is amazing. And I also love that the shirt's cropped. I wasn't expecting it to be really, really cute. All right, so... The next doll we're going to be looking at is Torlai. I'm the most excited about her. It's Torlai. It's the cat doll. Duh. Um, I really hope we get more cat characters, by the way. I don't want to already start asking for things, but like, please. Anyway, let's take a look at Torlai. So Torlai's changed a little bit. So instead of having the stripes on her cheeks and the two colored face, instead they've opted to just have these tiny little stripes here. And I love that. Um, also, she has a beauty mark now, which is interesting. Um, I love that she actually has the cat nose now. For some reason, she just didn't in Generation 1. They added it in Generation 2, and I prefer Generation 2 Torlai because of that. It just makes her look a lot better, and I love that she has it here, too. I don't know. She was just a girl with cat ears before. It was kind of weird. Um, I love this. So cute. And she also has an asymmetrical smirk. Adorable. Love the eyebrows, too. They are so thick. And there's two different layers to the eyebrow paint. So there's the individual painted hairs, and then the darker color in the background. It's hard to tell a little bit. And then you can see what I was talking about with the eyes. So she has these like cat eyes. So cool. And I love the the shape of her eyes too. I love that each character has a pretty distinct eye shape. I think it looks so, so good. And then if we pan the camera up a little bit, we can take a look at the ears, which are personally my favorite thing about the new Torlai dolls. Check that out. So much better than just the triangles Gen 1 had. So, so cute. I love the little fluff inside. And then, um, Real cat ears are weird. They're not triangular like you think they are. They have, like, this weird skin flap, and this actually has it now. I don't know. When I was a kid, I always just thought they were more triangular, and I always had cats, but when you actually look at them, they have this, like, extra thing, and now Torlai does, too. Great. <laughs> and then she has three earrings, so one is silver, one is red, and then on the other side, there's another silver one. And her hair has three different colors, and it's all saran. Frankie was all saran, too, if I didn't say that. Although, her blue streak might be polypropylene. I've heard rumors of that, but I can't tell. Um, she has a red-orange hair color, just like her original, but now she has this lighter orange color and this pink mixed in. Looks good. And she has... Mine, for some reason, the front row of hair is a little bit further down than it's probably supposed to be, so there's kind of a gap there, but it's not a big deal to me. Um, really nice thatched middle part line, and then the rest is just free in the back, and super, super densely packed rooting pattern, which I love. I'm really glad that they're doing that. It's going to be really, really fun for restyling, and her hair is super, super soft. Now we're going to be taking a look at her outfit. So I will say that this is one of my least favorite of the Generation 1 doll's outfits. Um, I don't know. Every piece is fine. It's just all together, not my favorite. Um, first of all, this jacket really reminds of Persephone and Meality. Like, this is the exact method they used to do the zipper pull, I'm pretty sure. And it's made out of a really nice pleather material, which I was not expecting at all. Really like the jacket. Mine has an asymmetrical collar. I don't think that's intentional. Um, <laughs> the inside is not really lined. And there's just little purple claw marks all over it and then she has this choker on with 
what is it? It kind of said it on her bio, I'm pretty sure, what that is supposed to be. So let me check. Scratch mark choker. Um, I guess it looks like a big open scratch mark. It looks more like a lightning bolt, honestly. And then her t-shirt is a little graphic. It's not really a T, is it? I mean, it's kind of a t-shirt. It kind of fits more like a tank top, though. But anyway, it's got a surged edge up here to mimic having like a colored neckline, I guess. And then it's just hem down here. And it has an iron-on cat on it. An interesting color scheme for the cat. It's got the red, orange, and pink, but it's kind of like, I guess, a tortoiseshell cat? I don't know. I would think it would be an orange cat. Is that what Torlai looks like when she's a cat now? I'm concerned. Oh, also, didn't show the hands, but Torlai and Claudine both have clawed hands, but Torlai has bigger hands. Also, Claudine's hand is warped from packaging. Sorry about that. And then you can see Frankie does not have clawed hands. It is different. <laughs> and then Torlai has a pretty intensely high-waisted skirt. This is not a good material to me. It's It does not feel nice. Um, it, it might be the same material as Frankie's, but I don't know. I'm not the biggest fan of this. It is like Vaporwave, which is interesting. It's black with a pink grid over it and these yellow claw marks. It's just, I don't know. It looks a little bit artificial, but it has this really big waistband piece and then the pleated skirt underneath. It's it's not my favorite piece, personally. I think I would really like this outfit if I gave her pants or something. I don't know. Um. Oh, and then she has a chain belt. This is popular in Monster High and was since the beginning Um, with a little paw print and I assume they're yarn balls. The detailing is so, so tiny that it's hard to tell. And then let me take this off. Oh, by the way, tail. We'll get there. Um, I'm not the biggest fan of the belt thing. When I, mm, It's worse without the belt thing. I don't know. I just don't like the skirt, personally. <laughs> um, also, she has a tail. It articulates just by moving around in a circle around where it's attached. And Torlai's clothing will have, like, an opening for it. But you can just work around it with the Velcro if you want her to wear somebody else's clothing. And the tail now has a big floofy tuft at the end. Pretty cool. Torlai still has her body stripes, so she has these ones on her leg. And then she has some on her arms that we're going to look at later when we do the body comparison. Because um, I'm pretty sure all three of the dolls that I'm showing you here have different bodies, or at least two of them do. So I wanted to show them to you. She is wearing these white boots with red little scratch marks on them. The shoelaces are black painted, which is quite nice. Purple sculpted on socks, which, I mean, there is purple in the outfit, I guess. I'm just not the biggest fan. These are amazing. These are little yarn balls that are little charms and you can take them off if you want to but like oh my god these are so cool and then we have black soles Ooh, lightning bolt shoes for frankie and then let's look oh the little paw really really cool and then let's take a look at the accessories so she comes with a bag that says his fits on it i'm pretty sure that's her band she's in a band now or maybe she's the one maybe she's the star oh my god if she's in a band can persephone and Meality also be in it please um, we've got a little feather with a mouse, and the mouse's tail is actually the little hook thing, which is quite cute. There's spikes on the bag, and the his fits thing is painted on. Everything else is undetailed, but looks good. Opens up. It's fun. And then we have Sweet Fang, who now has some teal detailing. Sweet Fang is a little saber tooth tiger. I really like um, Sweet Fang, and I'm really glad to finally have one. I really liked the original one, too, though, but never got a hold of him, unfortunately. Love the collar. Cute. The milk that's mentioned on the packaging. I love that it has, like, the little barcode. This is Lorem Ipsum Dipsum, which is um, Latin that they fill stuff in with. I'm pretty sure that's what that says anyway. Um, and then the nutrition facts. And then... Tuna can. Really big tuna can when you compare it to, like, the milk. This is huge. <laughs> Cute. And, oh still has all that stuff. I love the writing on it. It just adds so much realism. The eye coffin has a little saber-toothed cat hanging off of it. It's so cute. And then his fit shirt, which similar to Frankie's vest, not my favorite. I liked the surged edge though, but like this style of shirt does exist in real life. I just personally really don't like it. Um, and oh, Torlai also comes with a really big accessory, actually, um, which is cool. I'm surprised she comes with this. So she also comes with this mic stand. So the microphone, in theory, comes out. Yeah, it's just difficult. Um, come on. <laughs> there we go. Okay, it's in there really tight. 
cute microphone. I think the ears would cause problems with the sound pickup, but it's nice. And I love the little tail as the cord. And then this is like a little lion's paw that holds the mic in, which is quite cool. And then this part comes out, so I guess she can just hold that part if she wants to. I don't know. Um, and then spider web base. Okay, so since the shirt is band merch, it's not necessarily meant to go with this outfit, but lord, do I just like it with this outfit. Um, yeah, I think it would look great with the jacket, though, and I actually like the shirt better when it's on her. I will say that it looks less, like, two-dimensional and artificial when it's actually on the doll, so I do appreciate that. I just don't really like all-over print shirts when they're done this way. Not my favorite, um, but it looks good on her. And then... The microphone, I forgot to point this out, actually has a little finger hole, so she can hold it much better. Um, I don't really know how you're intended to have her hold it, but, you know, that's really cool, actually. I really appreciate it. And she also has little tufts of fur on the wrists. And um, where are the stripes? She has stripes on her arm. I missed them in my first review, actually. I did not notice them. And then if we move down, she also has little tufts of hair on her ankles. I really like that they added all these, like, monster details to each of the dolls, like, like extra fur and stuff. Because ultimately, there's certain monsters that just didn't have a lot going on. So I appreciate that they added little things like this. It just makes them a little bit more monster, which is fun. All right. So now for the next part of the review, I am actually going to be comparing all of the bodies and showing you the different body details, any that we missed anyway. So I will be right back. Quickly, I wanted to show you all of the bodies as well as explain some of the articulation to you guys because it is different. So Torlai and Claudine actually have the exact same body type, which make, I mean, at least it looks like it. If it's different, it's fooling me, but any difference that you're seeing is potentially because of the chest joint. Um, as you can see, that looks quite different from when it was postured up, right? I'm not sure. Um, but Frankie is taller than the others. You can see that the calf is longer, and I believe the torso is a bit different, but I'm not 100% sure. I think it's mainly the calves being longer, but who knows. Um, and then I'm going to move a little bit closer because... They maintain all of the articulation of an original Monster High doll, but they've added more, which I appreciate a lot. Also, hands still removable. Let me take Torlai off the stand really quick so I can show you. They just have a much thicker peg and um, feel less delicate. Definitely less delicate, which is ideal. And then I actually don't think that the... Oh, this still does. Okay, so the... I just haven't tried this one yet. So the elbows do still come out, actually, which is very nice. So you can still have like tight jewelry and tight sleeves and stuff, which is really, really cool. Head movement, basically the same as Generation 1. I remember breaking one of my Generation 1 doll's head joints. It was a creative monster because they couldn't look up as high as I wanted them to. Um, so I know that that was pretty limited to begin with. And then, you know, pretty good everywhere. Hits a right angle there, which is what you would expect. Wrists are good, not too loose, which is always ideal. And then they've added a chest joint, which is my favorite thing ever. And it actually has full rotational motion, horrifically. Um, but it also has, like, it's basically a ball joint. I love the chest joint. I'm so, so glad that they added it. You can hit a full 90-degree sit, which is the dream. And then the legs also hit a 90-degree angle. By now, I've done probably like four videos on the new Monster High dolls, so you guys know how I feel about them. I've been really, really enjoying them. As somebody who was an original Monster High fan and has a ton of the original dolls, I've been really, really impressed with these. I think the build quality of the dolls themselves is a tier above the original dolls. I think that the faces are really, really cool, and I know that's up to personal preference, but the original Monster High dolls, there's a lot of issues with the faces, and I feel like these are much more polished. And I love that, for the most part, the hair has remained pretty consistent in quality to Generation 1. I love the designs themselves. They The designs are a little bit different from Gen 1, but I don't think they're overly different. And I don't mind that the characters are different either. That's um, always going to come with the reboot. I'm just, I'm really optimistic about these. I was very nervous before they actually started hitting stores or before we ever saw pictures of them. Because if... Um, there's a lot of, like, fierce competition on the doll market right now, and I was just worried that these would not be able to survive, and I'm just blown away by them, and I continue to be blown away by them. As you can see, I've already cleared quite a bit of space on my doll display for them. You can see Signature up there, Fear Squad, and then these are others, um, so you can tell I'm super excited about these. I just, I love them. There's, um, some quality concerns, there's some outfit pieces that I'm not the biggest fan of, but overall, um, these are hitting it out of the park. I'm in love. I absolutely 
cannot believe that Monster High is back and in such a good form. And I love too that if people aren't super into the new dolls, which I understand they're not going to be for everybody, there is still... They're, they've promised to continue releasing the Generation 1 style dolls like Real Drama, like Creep Productions, like Haunt Couture. So um, that's really, really exciting that... Um, original fans like myself or people that just aren't super into the old dolls or sorry aren't super into the new dolls or are new to Monster High and want some old style dolls still have that opportunity they need to they do definitely need to work on distribution of those though it's been kind of a mess um but anyway that's it for this video I'd love to know who your favorite doll at least from this set is I have to say that even though Torlai's sitting here looking at me Frankie is the standout doll in this set although I'm not the biggest fan of the vest again I, I like vests and I like Frankie in vest but this particular vest just did not do it for me not my favorite um I just think Frankie is so so good in generation three I think they look amazing and I love 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 Torlai too and Claudian's face is very impressive to me I just need to find a way to get these glasses to stay on I couldn't get them back on um for this because you kind of have to stick them through the hair I, I just I don't confused by the glasses so yeah there are some things that are not ideal but okay that that kind of worked there we go we got some glasses on there's some things that aren't perfect but I didn't expect they're everything to be perfect immediately but I'm just really excited for more and I definitely hope we get more Torlai dolls that come with extra outfit pieces because this has to go this needs fixing <laughs> um but yeah I love that these come with so many extra accessories too like the eye coffins with the signature dolls is awesome and then you get like fun storytelling accessories like um Torlai's a singer now so you get her band t-shirt you get her microphone which is really hard to put back on the stand it's just a little tight there we go just slide it on perfect um the extra outfit pieces above and beyond doing to do that like having the little jackets and vests and um this was part of Torlai's main outfit but you actually get the um, little band merch t-shirt too and the bags like I'm impressed and for $25 in this particular doll market I'm blown away by these truly I can't believe they maintained the same cost as the original Monster High dolls from 10 years ago over 10 years ago but come with more accessories and have comparable quality if not better quality in some cases like um sometimes the clothing is not up to par but the build quality of the actual dolls is enough to shoot it over the edge for me in some cases I don't know anyway that's it for this video I'd love to know what you guys think of these and thanks so much for watching for all this time bye